All right, in this video, we are going to talk about the fold column. If you've never heard of that, then that's great because you're going to know all about it by the time we're done. And we're also going to code up a custom function for toggling the fold column. There's a lot of interesting pieces that go along with that. First of all, what is the fold column? The fold column gives you an extra column in your gutter that shows you where folds are and how deep they are. And you can configure them however you like. And so you can have really huge ones that take up a bunch of room over in your gutter, or you can just have them set to just show you how deep they are. And what am I talking about? Well, I'll show you. If I look at my fold column now, it's set to zero. That's the default. If you look closely here and I set it to one, you'll see my gutter get just a little bit bigger and show you that again. Get a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. Okay, and you see there's really, there's nothing there. It's completely empty. But what we'll do here is we'll create some folds so that we can see what this looks like. I'm just going to take this little piece here and I'm just going to create a fold. I'll create a fold here. We'll go down here, create a fold. So now if I set my fold column to one, you see these little pluses show up. That gives you an indication that the folds are there when, let's say you open up all your folds. Now you can see that the folds are all over there. Let's go ahead and create a, another fold here that gives us a little bit deeper here. So we'll go here. We'll say that's a fold and then we'll go up and we'll say that's a fold. And now if I open all the folds, you can see that we have these numbers here and the numbers tell us how deep the fold at this location is. So this is telling you that this fold is two levels deep. So if I were to close that fold, you could see that, that closes and then I can close this fold. And then I open that one, open that one, and you see the depth. And this is with my fold column set to one, if I set it to zero and one, there they are. Again, you have many options. You can go all the way out to having nine, but I like to have either zero or one and just see the numbers. I don't want a whole bunch of space and a bunch of real estate being taken up over on that side of the gutter, but you can set it to more and I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll change this up to say two. And you see how now I don't have numbers there because the deepest I go is two. If I set this to three, that gives me more room, but I don't have anything that goes to three here. What we can do is we'll just go uh, and we'll fold that. And then what we'll do is we'll go here and we'll fold that. And then we'll go up a level 
and we'll go there, and we'll fold like that. Let me go a little deeper there. Okay, now I'm still only at a depth of three here, so let's see if I can go even crazier here. Let's see. All right. Now there we go. So now you can see the depths are showing you at each level. And I can just keep going out and it gets bigger and it can show me this or I can have it show me the numbers and you get the idea there. So I can close that and go and close all that. And then if I didn't show the folds, now you can see in the fold column where everything is. We know the depth that each of these are. All right, so that's the fold column. I only like to have this one that we're on now where it shows the numbers or none. So I like to be able to toggle it. But as shown before, this is not a toggle. It is a string value that you pass in where you have various values that you can put in. But I want to be able to just turn it on and off. I want to treat it like it's a Boolean. I don't ever want to use two, three, four, whatever. I only ever want zero or one. I need a way to turn this into a Boolean and then just be able to toggle it with a key mapping to a function. All right, so settings, I think, is a good place to put something like this. And what we're going to do is write a function and then we're going to expose it so that it can be picked up by key mappings and the rest of my runtime. All right, so let's start building this out here. We'll make a section here to put some functions. All right, all right. Now, I mentioned that we're dealing with strings here, but that I want to have a Boolean toggle. I need to have a way to take the string containing zero and the string containing one and make those into Booleans. As far as I know, Lua doesn't have something like that built in. And so we're going to have to sort of make our own. If you know of a better way, please leave a comment and let me know. But this is the route I'm going to take for now. How about two bool? And what I need is a mapping here to take the string of one and string of zero and make them into the appropriate Boolean values. Make this one here and we'll say that's true. And then we'll make the two here and we'll say, hey, you're false. All right. And what I want to do is when we get into the actual function, I want to read the value of fold column. This should be zero. The next thing I want to do is create a function. And we'll call it toggle fold call. Yeah, it's probably pretty good. What I want to do is check the current fold column value and see if it's true. And if it is, then what I want to do is set it to false and then otherwise set it to true. So that turns it into a toggle. What I need to do is do if to bool and then I need to read this property or setting. Okay, so opt all right dot fold 
column. All right. And because it's going to be Boolean, if it's true, then I want to set it to false. And of course, I can't set it to false. I need to set it to the string zero. So we'll set it to the string zero here. Otherwise, we'll set it to one. Let's call the function and see what happens. Now I happen to know that this is not going to work for a very important reason. So I'm going to source this and we will see what happens. Let's see that that's getting added. So if we set it back to zero and now I source the file, I am getting it. But if I do it again, it's not toggling. The reason for this is that if there's anything other than true, it's going to go to the else and set it to one. So in our case, if we set this to zero and we source this, anything other than one is automatically going to set us back to one. But then when we do it again, nothing happens because that is not actually how we get the value of a fold column. When you try to access a setting like this, you actually get a table. Let me show you what I mean here. If I go Okay, and I'll save that. Now, if I go like this, I get a table with the name fold column and the value one. I don't get just the value. So when we're looking at this here, we're actually getting that whole entire table. And that is not what we want. What we want is to use the property accessor, the getter. The way you can do that is just by saying get like this. I'll show you. Okay, so we'll save that. Now what we'll do is we'll source it. And you can see down there, it's a one. And now a zero. And now a one. And now a zero. So as I source it, it is toggling. And that is exactly what I want. But that wasn't going to work with just trying to access full column because that is a whole table. I just want that one or zero so that it can be run through my little two bool table here to convert. It should be clear when it's on or off because you can see the folder column showing up, but it might be nice to throw a little message down inside the function to let you know that it's changed and what it's been changed to. Okay. The chunks I want here are, we'll just say fold column is set to from the getter again there. We'll just say false empty table here. So now what we can do is toggle it. We'll get fold column is set to one and we'll toggle it again. Fold column is set to zero and P is getting called first and then the function is being called. So we are getting the printout of one and then fold column is set to zero and it is zero right now. And so it's just this here is being printed before this runs. So this was just for our little debugging here. That 
global p function for debugging is in my dot files and as i said i stole that from pj DeVries, but you can see it's right there it's just pretty simple gives you a nice wrapper around print vim inspect and just makes life easier and so you can get that from my dot files or you'll find them in tj's dot files always a good place to look for good things and any of the people on the neovim core team they have great dot files to go and learn from okay so now we can toggle fold column is set to one and so i now have a toggle here and that's great it works here in this local file and it tells me what's happening that's all well and good but i need this to work throughout my NeoVim runtime. I need to expose this function for the world here. So the first thing that I need to do is create an empty table called local M and you'll see this pattern all over the place. And this is so that you can expose this toggle fold function. What I'm going to do here is return M, which of course does nothing for me now. Put our function onto this M table. I'm going to need to set up a key mapping for this toggle. We'll go over to mappings here and just make some room here and we'll say toggle fold column okay we'll bring this up here okay and we'll have to see if we can find something that i don't already use okay and we'll go ahead and let the snippet Write this up for me. Make that an N. And we'll, let's see, how about leader? Um, how about comma toggle fold? That's probably not taken, so I think we're safe there. Now we'll set up our mapping here, and this will be oops, to Lua require. Yeah, let's see, Joel dot settings. Can't type Joel dot settings. And a dot, what was that? Toggle fold call. Hey, look at that. Toggle fold call. Okay, good. And that's good there. All right, and we'll say no remap is true and we'll make the actual calling of this function also be silent and all right and let's see here what am i forgetting okay i actually want to have this thing run hopefully i'm not forgetting anything else here okay so then let's we'll source this key map here and oh okay jewel settings not found oh because yeah jewel settings <laughs> okay let's there we go. Exit bin and go down and okay, open this up. All right. Now let's see if things are working. 
and it looks like they are but we don't have any folds so let's go to telescope here and we will create some folds and well, give me a fold okay and now we've created the folds we'll open them we don't see them there but let's toggle folds hey look at that okay and i'm just hitting the comma tf this is exactly what i wanted so there you have it that's how you go about getting what you want out of neovim and the sky's the limit you can turn a setting that isn't a boolean into a switch if you want to if you only care about two different values and you still have the option to go down and set this to whatever you want at any time and then of course set it back down to one and then down to zero and then you go back and forth again so lots of fun there this is the function here and we will toggle fold column okay so that is looking pretty good there just a reminder that fold column is not a boolean i just wanted it this way so thank you for watching i really appreciate it please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time with more outstanding content